I know what most of you are probably thinking, who the hell's Dick Miller? As you've seen throughout the flick tonight, you know who he is. He's, just, he's been in dozens of movies and shows that you've seen and enjoyed over the years. You simply probably did not know his name. But Nick Miller is one of, did I say Nick Miller? I should have been Dick Miller. One of the greatest character actors of all time. His career began in 1955, like we talked about. When he was young, he met a young director named Roger Corman. Miller comes up and says that uh, he's a writer. Corman says, you know, I have scripts, I need actors. And Miller's response was, all right, I'm an actor. And so began a resume that has included more than 170 credits in films and television, including Corman classics such as Bucket of Blood, Little Shop of Horrors, and tonight's The Terror, as well as The Terminator, and Corman protege Joe Dante's Gremlins, Inner Space, and The Burbs. I've been trying to get in touch with Miller since spring, but he's been busy with a documentary that he's been shooting on his life and career called That Guy, Dick Miller. So when I'm speaking with his wife slash rep, she told me that between Christmas, which was his 85th birthday, by the way, so related birthday wishes, uh, and New Year's, that'd be the best time to reach him. And that's exactly how it played out. We spoke on December 27th, and it was a blast. So anything to add before we I, I can't wait to see this. Uh, I really like Dick Miller's movies, so I can't, I can't wait to see what you've got, especially with the Tarantino thing. Mm -hmm. really got my interest going. Yeah, the, the, the little elements of things you're going to enjoy here, because he is 85 and we were having the conversation, his wife was there with him, so every once in a while I would say something and, he, and there'd be a delay and I could hear him look at his wife and say, I can't, I can't, hear, I can't hear what he said. So <laughs> there's going to be a little bit of that, so enjoy those for what they are. But without further delay, legendary character actor Dick Miller. First of all, I want to thank you for taking some time to join us. We really appreciate it. Oh, nothing. I've got lots of time on my hands right now. Okay. Well, first of all, happy birthday and happy holidays. I mean, with you having Christmas and your birthday on the same day. Yeah. It's been that way for a lot of years. <laughs> you know, I always thought I got shortchanged growing up. My birthday was on December 20th. But what was it like to actually have your birthday on Christmas on the day? I mean, did you ever feel like you got robbed? You didn't get any presents for your birthday with all Christmas? Constantly. That was always my big complaint. <laughs> All right, so uh, what has the name Walter Paisley meant to your career? Walter Paisley was, is, is the most phenomenal person in the world. Uh, I did a picture of uh, the character's name was Walter Paisley. Uh, we followed him with another picture, and uh, we didn't have a name for the character. And uh, uh, Joe Dante said, why don't we name him? Uh, Walter Paisley, uh, same name but a uh, different character. Well, uh, it seemed to be an inside joke, <laughs> and it lasted for about seven or eight pictures. Uh, just recently, I did a picture for him, and uh, the character had no name. It was Policeman. I said, we call him Officer Paisley. <laughs> Times the name's been used. Uh, during an interview for a documentary about Roger Corman, Jack Nicholson actually became emotional speaking about that legendary director. How do you feel about Corman having worked with him so often throughout your career? Uh, it's a fortunate thing. It's about all I can say. Uh, I met the man. Uh, he, uh, he liked what I did. I, I don't know if you know the story about how I met him. Uh, I'll tell it once more, it can't hurt. <laughs> I uh, have a friend, Jonathan Hayes, who was acting on a picture for him. And uh, he said, I have to drop something off in Mr. Corman's office. Come along. I was a writer then. Mm -hmm. And I figured, well, maybe I'll get some uh, writing assignments. Well, I was introduced to him. We were talking, blah, blah, blah. He said, where are you from? I said, New York. He said, uh, uh, what do you do? I said, I'm a writer. He said, ah, I don't need braggers. I've got, I need some actors. I said, I'm an actor. <laughs> that was exactly the way it happened. Uh, I, he liked what I did. Uh, and I've been working for him ever since. <laughs> I worked 49 projects with him. That's amazing. Um, for Corman, and then you, you brought him up a little earlier later with Joe Dante, uh, you simply were in just about everything they did. However, for a movie like James Cameron's The Terminator, what was that process of landing the role of the gunshot owner like? Did they, did they just call you up? Did they send you a script? Or did you have to audition for something like that? The Terminator was, uh, I think it was just a, a matter of, uh, there was a conference 
uh, with Cameron, and uh, I, I went home, and there was the call was waiting for me, coming to the job, and that was it. I uh, very rarely uh, read for directors. Uh, I don't seem to do good on uh, interviews or auditions. Uh, I, I am not quite sure what I'm doing at the time, but. Uh, I get a call from him, and that's it. I'm, I'm usually get the job. All right. Uh, you were cast to play Monster Joe in Pulp Fiction because director Quentin Tarantino stated you were one of his favorite character actors of all time, but you didn't make the final cut that hit theaters. Can you share that story with us from getting the role through the initial screening for the cast and crew? Uh, I was initially invited to uh, the cast and crew screening, uh, but when I got there, there was trouble. I couldn't get in. <laughs> it seems as if, he says, you're not on the list. I said, that's ridiculous. Of course I'm on the list. <laughs> so let me in anyway. Uh, I saw uh, Quentin there, and uh, we we get talking and uh, blah, blah, blah. He says, what are you doing here? I said, I'm, I'm here to see this picture. Mm -hmm. He says, no, they're not in it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not in it. He says, no, and he walked away. And I was it. I, I said, you've got to be kidding me. I watched the whole picture. I wasn't in it. But uh, there was a, a time right afterwards he came to me and he said, you're not in the picture, but we're going to add you to the DVDs uh, and all the uh, screenings of it. At the end, uh, the, the scene will be shown, but where you won't be in the picture. And I've never understood that, really. Yeah, there was no further explanation of that at all? He didn't give you a reason why that you didn't make the final cut or anything like that? No, there has never been a reason. There's never been a satisfactory reason. They usually say uh, uh, the time element, the time element. Well, uh, the picture was uh, too long to be uh, affected by time. Right, it was already a long picture. and I mean, I've seen the clip with you in it on the DVD and whatnot, and it certainly it wasn't anything that was going to make the film any longer. It kind of is hard to understand that it was too, for time purposes. So, um, One of my favorite movies, actually, is The Burbs. Can you give us some of your recollections of that cul-de-sac scene with Tom Hanks, Bruce Stern, Rick Dukeman, and Corey Feldman in the back of the garage uh, garbage truck? The Burbs. Uh, just another picture. We, we got, got it going. It wasn't really a script for the part of the, of the uh, garbage man. <laughs> And we ad lib most of it. Oh, really? <laughs> it's pretty good for ad lib. Um, oh, well, I'm a writer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. So, uh, well, we just talked about that with Tom Hanks. He worked with some other, some of the other biggest names in Hollywood history: Boris Karloff, Jack Nicholson, Harvey Keitel, Robert De Niro, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and The Terminator. Was there ever an actor you work with, you just had some screen time with, that just turned out to be? Uh, Kind of like uh, prima donnas and divas, they weren't necessarily as nice as maybe the public thinks they are? No, they, uh, they all turned out to be, uh, what should we call them, gentlemen. Hmm. Speaking of Karloff and Nicholson, we're going to be featuring The Terror this month on B-Movie. Uh, what are your, some, some of your memories of that movie, making that movie? Terror is a, a joke. We, were, we went up to Big Sur to shoot the picture. Oh, first of all, we were shot down here in Hollywood because Roger Corman had three days with Boris Karloff on his contract. And uh, Boris said, uh, I want to go home. He said, no, he says, I got another picture. We got to shoot it. Uh, he, he shot a lot of scenes with Boris Karloff just walking back and forth. Uh, <laughs> and that was the end of it. And we, we shot some scenes, a lot of scenes that meant meant nothing to each other. I heard from him about three months later. He says, we're doing the, we're doing the terror with Boris Karloff. I said, well, I thought Boris Karloff was left. He said, oh, he left, yeah, but nobody knew what the story was about. There was no script. <laughs> we, the picture, we started shooting. We shot the scene, scene after scene after scene. Nothing made sense. And uh, there's a uh, scene at the end where Jack Nicholson gets me up against the wall, mm -hmm. and he, he, he's pounding the daylights out of me, and I've got to explain in a couple of minutes what happened in the whole story. I do. It, it may not sound right, but it's, it, it's there. <laughs> 
Um, you just talked about it, just not really knowing what was going on. There wasn't really a script, and you did it really, really quickly. For those movies, filming by the seat of your pants like that with these Roger uh, Corman movies, what's one of the funniest stories you have for something to coming up with that? There really is not, uh, not much funny stories about We have a history of uh, 50 years together, and uh, I think I, I've seen him socially twice. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we we just we never made it. We don't get along. I don't know. <laughs> just like that work. All right. So outside of the two and five day sprints to complete Corman movies, what was the longest you ever spent on set for a shoot? Did you ever spend more than a day or two on a movie set? Uh, oh yeah, we we shot a picture. So in the old days, uh, the the week was uh, six days, and. Uh, he, he would like to finish up in in, uh, in six days if he could, but he usually shot about two weeks on a picture. Uh, we worked very fast. We uh, we very rarely did uh, second takes uh, unless, uh, as I said, unless the camera falls over. There's no reason to shoot again. <laughs> uh, so, do you still travel around to conventions at all? Oh yes. I'm uh, due for can, coming up in uh, March, I believe. Yeah, in Charlotte. Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they kind of keep you alive, they keep you in touch with your fans. All right, can you tell us a little bit about that guy, Dick Miller, the documentary about your life and career you've been working on so diligently over the last year or so? That I can. <laughs> Uh, so it's a film called uh, That Guy Dick Miller. It is, you, you said it all. It's about my life in, <laughs> in the business. Uh, there isn't really much to say about it. It's, it's a wonderful picture. We were, uh, it's almost finished. Uh, just got a few little things like the music and the color and things like that. Uh, it'll be out this summer, and uh, I hope everybody goes and sees it. All right, so when you look back on a career that began in 1955 and is still going strong today, what thoughts come to mind for you? Well, it's, it's hard to say. You, you, you look around and you, you try to find someone who, that you can compare notes to. They're all dead. There's nobody left anymore. Uh, you finally you get 60 years in a business. Uh, it's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, you had to tell him about Cutaway because he talked to you about Pulp Fiction. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I, I just did the, I was in New York. Uh, I went there. They were doing a film called Cutaway. I'm still, I'm still working on these pictures. That's the thing I can't understand. Uh, we did a little picture called Cutaway. It was based on, uh, uh, people, being, uh, people being cut out of pictures. Hmm. Uh, and uh, their whole scenes were cut out. Well, who's it? Abe Vigoda. Abe Vigoda. Charlotte Rampling. Charlotte Rampling. You. And me. We were all uh, faced with the same problem of having pictures, uh, having parts lost in the pictures. And uh, well, what happened to those people afterwards, uh, it was a funny little picture. Uh, they, they try to tell us what happened to these people. We all meet. Compare notes, I guess. <laughs> so that's uh, that movie that they're still working on that, or that's out now? Uh, that's, that's done. Okay. Uh, I think that's uh, in release in New York. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yes. All right. All right, well, Dick Miller, we know you've been really busy this year working on the documentary and whatnot, and other con things, conventions, and we just can't thank you enough for taking a few minutes to speak with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.